everyone really good to be here with you live I see a whole yeah. bunch of y'all in chat already um, tell us where you're tuning in from some of you are already already telling us Virginia Texas New Hampshire San Diego I'm Bailey from Glowforge here with Nick from Glowforge hi everyone we're in Seattle it's a beautiful sunny day actually it was a little not so sunny on my drive over but it's, it's gorgeous <laughs> out now we're getting into it's our what, really what do they call that like around. we've got like the two false springs or whatever yes. like <laughs> yeah yeah and there was some nice days at the we'll weekend it's beautiful mm -hmm. yeah yeah and then it rained yesterday so i had to spray paint in my garage so this morning my entire house smelled terrible ah uh, fun just need some good weather i know that's frustrating yeah, yeah trying to dry out the tent trying to do yard work yeah. all that stuff can't do it yeah i know we're it's eager. impossible well, thank you all for joining us for a class or our live stream today. Mm -hmm. Today is a bit of a class, I guess. I guess you could say. Um, we've noticed that many of you seem to like these streams where we're um, teaching a specific skill or technique on the Glowforge. So uh, we'd love to hear your ideas for other Glowforge topics, prints, techniques mm -hmm. uh, that you'd like to see. Things that you want. How do how do you do that? And we'd love to tackle um, them with you live. And today is one that we've never done before. Mm -hmm. Highly, highly requested. 3D engraving. Yeah. It's, <laughs> Which, what does that even mean? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty cool concept. And yeah. I, I would be interested to know what you think you know about it out there. Yeah. Because it's, it's not that complex, really. No. I mean, the way I would describe it is literally as if you were using a chisel or a knife or something and carving into a piece of wood to create a three-dimensional The way pattern. that I would describe it is, you know when you're at Disneyland and you <laughs> go to the Haunted Mansion and when you're walking, you, after you go down the elevator, you're walking through a hallway and there's like, uh, there's some portraits of creepy people that they're done with a 3D engrave effect. They're actually like inverted portraits so that the people look like they're following you. <laughs> That's how I describe it. Wow. <laughs> I, I don't uh, know how to follow that, no, to be I, honest. <laughs> so basically, 3D Engrave is using uh, grayscale to create depth, dimension, uh, texture. And so that can be for like really dramatic um, effect like I'm talking about, where you can create you know, a, a dimensional looking photo that looks like it's, it's got you know, real depth to mm -hmm. it. Or um, like you can do something functional with it, like creating texture or grip on, um, on, on something that you need to, to grip. Um, or yeah. We have this example, y'all might have seen this before mm -hmm. if you've followed Glowforge for a while. This is kind of a quintessential 3D engrave that shows off all the things that a 3D engrave could do, but this would be, <laughs> this is quite a undertaking to print something like this on a Glowforge. Yes. Let me show you up close. Yeah. And when we say to print something, the actual printing part is easy. Sure, you Glowforge just press the button. To be yeah. clear, you're not gonna, your arm's not going to be sore. No, right, no, no. absolutely. <laughs> but creating the artwork yes. for this can be a bit of a challenge. So. I don't want this to seem intimidating to people out there because I'm going to show you exactly how it works and how you can achieve something similar relatively easily. Um, yeah. But just be aware that something like this is, you know, might take a bit of practice. Sure. Just take a bit of skill. This um, is, but I would say this is achievable. the like advanced level is yeah. is accomplishing something like this. Yeah. Um, and it's, I mean, it's very, it's very, very cool. You you would t you would spend a long time on a CNC machine trying to create something like that with that level of detail because the bit that you would have to use would be so fine. You'd have to cut so slowly. 
I now, mean, look this at that detail. Took a while to print, I do believe. And then um, it had to be rinsed a lot of times. It was multiple yeah. prints, and Mo then yeah, to get that deep layers. down into it, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did this one a while ago, and we were really experimenting with the capabilities of yep. 3D engraved mm -hmm. for the first Absolutely. time. Yeah. Yeah, um, and like Bailey said, after the print, because this is solid wood that we're using, there's a lot of resins and stuff that kind of come out and make kind of a gunky mess. Mm -hmm. And actually, these particular examples that I created to show you today, I've not scrubbed or cleaned, so oh, you can so we see can kind see of what that looks like. The yeah. gunk. Um, and we just used some, uh, like a pumice uh, type soap, something mm -hmm. slightly abrasive and a scrubbing brush and just got like right in there, took out the sticky resins that, that were in there and left it to dry. Is that, that orange it. goo soap? That's yeah, like for work. I, I can't remember what that's called, but that yes. stuff is the best. Yeah, 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 yeah. Zep yeah. might be one of the yeah. brands that does it. The kind of thing that takes paint off your hands, that kind of stuff. Oh, there's some appreciation yes. for my Disney analogy in, oh. in the... <laughs> Fun fact, I worked at Disneyland for only about a year, but it's a, you know, one of those life-changing experiences. It comes up in most conversations it, with you. I, too, it yeah. does. I drove the submarine uh, finding Nemo, but yeah, Haunted Mansion is one of my faves. And those, those, uh, those details, like the, the eyes that follow you. They That's why Disney is the brand they are. Yeah. Yes. In fact, there is a Glowforge maker. I wish I knew their handle off the top of my head, but there is a Glowforge owner who is a huge Disney fan and they have a Haunted Mansion themed guest room that is like oh, wow. I mean it could be at the Disneyland Hotel I would pay to stay in this room it is gorgeous so if you're out there or if you know who I'm talking about <laughs> share some photos please <laughs> yes <laughs> that sounds amazing yeah all right should we should we dive oh, what right type in of file are we working with they're asking Oh, okay. So, yeah, actually, that's a great, yeah. a great segue. Excellent question. <laughs> uh, so, we're going to be working with bitmaps today. Okay. So, essentially, images made of pixels. Um, and that's a little different than we often do. We often, you can often just Google and grab something off of anything. You yeah, know, any. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and something like a photograph, for example, uh, JPEG, PNG, those types of files. Those are bitmaps. Those are things that you could potentially apply the three D engraved setting to. Now, that doesn't mean they'll necessarily turn out the way you would expect. So, just be aware. But by all means, throw something in there and see what happens. Often the results can surprise you. <laughs> um, but the difference here is with a bitmap, we can only engrave it. We can't cut it. Okay. There's, no, there's no instructions built into the file to tell the laser where to go. Uh, whereas with a vector file, which could be an SVG or a PDF, um, something that we might get from, well, we can get it from lots of different places, actually. Um, even from PowerPoint, you can export SVGs but, ooh, all the way through to Adobe Illustrator. Like that. Absolutely. And with those, we can incorporate uh, both engraves and cuts. Now, the difference here with the engraves of a vector is they all have to be one level of power. So if you imagine drawing a square right. and you set that to engrave, that entire square would be very even. It would like, all look the same. Where is like, that that we were just showing one? off? Oh, I was just going to show off this. Oh, like, uh, yeah. Is this, I mean, so, so as an example, yeah, this would be this would be a bit nap, but if you put this in as a, as a grayscale, this isn't going to create a 3D effect for you. It's going to be at one level, right? It would be somewhat 3D. Uh, <laughs> But the, the, the way that it would translate to the image is not necessarily such that you'd recognize it as a person. Got it. Because you're relying <laughs> on like color and things like that. Ah, there. this is um, a 3D, or sorry, this is a photo engrave. We did a live stream on photo engraves a couple weeks ago. So this is a better example of what you were trying to here's say. An okay. example, yeah, so like here, you can see this is an engraved area, but it's all very uniform. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and, and so all of that has the same level of power applied to it. But if we switch to something like this, which I think if you kind of tilt it and show the edge, hopefully you can see the three dimensionality of, of that shape. And that's because we used the bitmap to control the power of the laser. And by that, I mean anything that is dark is gonna have more power applied to it. And anything that's light is gonna have less power. And that's ultimately how you create a file to carve into the material. So I could show you really quick, uh, if I jump over to my screen, um, a, a quick graphic that I created just to explain this a little bit further. Here we go, perfect. So here we have a gradient. So the very simple bitmap example going from light to dark. And if we send this to Glowforge and choose the 3D engrave setting, it's gonna look along this gradient and apply different levels of power. Essentially here could be 1% power and over here would be 100% power. And so if you look at a piece of material and imagine we're looking at the side of it and we just chopped it in half to look at the cross section, over here, we're basically not engraving at all because we're not using any power. Down here, we're using all of the power, and so we're engraving pretty deep. Um, and this follows a relatively linear path. It depends on the material, but you get the kind of idea. Dark means deep, light doesn't. If we take it one step further and add uh, a middle point to this gradient, so we're going light, dark, light, we'd end up creating a V sort of shape, like a chamfer, or a, um, not a chamfer, sorry, like a countersink. If you were doing a screw, 
uh, and you wanted to create a countersink by 3D engraving, you could use this type of technique. You'd use a radial gradient because it's a circle, um, but again, you set the middle to dark, the outside to light, and this is what we'd end up with. Ah, oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So what I did today was to create something that was looking forward to summer, Right. Uh, and with the optimism of spring and the yes. sunshine. And something we, that had a, a practical... Certainly not going to rain every day, forever. Of, yes, no, yes. 100% not. <laughs> and if it does, you can probably play this game inside. Sure. Uh, <laughs> but I made um, a, a pickleball uh, racket bat. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure how you'd call it today. With a 3D engraved handle for grip. Uh, now this so is cool. a couple of layers of, of thick plywood. Uh, and then those close. 3D engraved handles on there. So this is pretty rudimentary, but I think illustrates the power of 3D engrave really easily. Uh, last night when I was playing with this, I really wished I had two different materials because what I was hoping I could do is something like this, where I cut out this pattern in the middle from Inlay. one sheet and then, and then start Ooh. to swap the pieces over so you can get a cool kind of a effect. We'll, we'll build the rest of it later. Um, anyway, I just used some <laughs> spray paint uh, in the end it's using gorgeous. the masking that's on there. This is one that's not been glued together. You can see how I might peel this masking off just in this area and then I can apply some spray paint uh, and add that effect. But anyway, that's all Love that. outside of the 3D Love that. And this is walnut, mm -hmm. it looks like, and then maple. That's maple hardwood, yeah. Hardwood? Yeah. Oh, because is it important to do 3D engrave with certain types of materials? It's probably best. Yeah. Um, just because the, the, like the density and the, and the composition of hardwood is pretty consistent throughout it. Compared depth. to plywood. Absolutely. Sure. You've got layers and glue. And so if you try and engrave a nice shape, those are going to be interrupted by the glue or the whatever it is you might encounter in the material. We also uh, recommend hardwood for the living hinge technique that we did in a, yes. um, in a stream a little while well, ago. That's plywood. right. Oh, no, that's the opposite. Opposite, yeah. Oh, because <laughs> because with the <laughs> with with hardwood we didn't like the grain That's for it. the living hinge. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. it does matter though the types of wood given the project to get that the you're best working result. on. Yeah, sure. absolutely. And you could absolutely try plywood. Um, acrylic would work just just fine too. I don't think the surface of acrylic looks very good when you 3D engrave it to be yeah. honest, but it's you know it's subjective right. to, to a certain extent. Um, but to create this design, I'll show you exactly what I did. It's it's really simple. Now, I'm in Illustrator right now, which is my method of choice, my, my program of choice. Um, but you could use a similar technique with any kind of vector-based software. Uh, let's do it like this. They're asking, so. does spray paint stick well to proof grade? It's a good question because the proof grade is pre-finished. Mm -hmm. So um, it would probably, it's more porous if you were to paint on uh, like the draft board. Yep. Um, I use the paint pens on that a lot. But mm -hmm. I mean, this looks like it's stayed in pretty well. Yeah. I. It's not going to stick as well as if you were to abrade the surface slightly to provide a key. Oh, so if you had, yeah, just a little sand, yeah. sanded it just a bit. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. For this demonstration, I just sprayed it right on. And actually, I used, this is getting slightly off topic, but um, you know Bear, the paint brand, mm -hmm. B-E-H-R, sell it at Home Depot. Um, they've recently released their own spray paint. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't ton of different colors now. It used to be just white and black. But uh, that's what I used on this. And I was quite impressed. It came out very nicely from the can. You know, sometimes with spray paint, oh, yeah. like the, the nozzle size or the size of the spray is not good. This this was great. It went on quick. It dried nice. Um, so, yeah, it might be worth checking out if yeah. you're in the market for a new type of spray paint. Um, but it worked, it worked pretty well. Uh, now, to glue these together, I, I will admit that I did use a bit of sandpaper between the layers just to rough them up mm -hmm. and then some wood glue just mm -hmm. to make sure it was extra strong. Did you clamp it? Uh, yeah, I used just some binder clips, you know, oh. like stationary type <laughs> yeah. things, just around the edge. That's all it took. Same with the handle, too, because um, if we are going to be whacking stuff it with this, hefty. I, I figured, yeah. It feels like a tennis racket. Right, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. I agree. It's, it's more solid than I thought. Yeah. Now, I, I did try and follow the pickleball uh, regulation, yeah. so I think this is a regulation size pickleball. What I'm not sure about is whether you can have holes and stuff in it, like, you know, mm. to make it like move quicker. Typical ones don't seem to, but anyway. Mm -hmm. Point is... Yep. For your pickleball design, <laughs> you could create anything that you wanted to. But just to get back to our 3D engrave here, I'll show you what I did. Now, I used the, uh, the stroke effect in Illustrator to, to create this particular design. So I'm going to create one of these circles here um, just by creating a circle and assigning it this line. Then I'm going to make it thicker, which is going to be the thickness of my gradient. And I'm going to switch it down here to a gradient. Now, you can see this is going from black to white, but it's going as if it's a linear gradient right here. So let me go up to here and choose this radial one, and we can see how that changes. Now the outside edge is dark, the inside edge is light. And by manipulating these sliders, you see how that's changing? So I can create a different pattern, knowing that the light area is not going to engrave very deep, and the outside area is. And basically all I did 
was create a series of offset paths like this. I'm using the object path and then offset oh, path wow. tool right here to create these different concentric circles. You know, so you just create as many as you need. And then what we have cool. to do, and this is the important step, this is still <laughs> a vector right now. We have to rasterize this. We have to turn it into a bitmap. And to do that in Illustrator, we just go up to object and then rasterize. And then we're gonna change this to grayscale. I'm gonna keep the resolution nice and high, change my background to transparent, keep this as art and press okay. Now, a lot of those settings aren't super important. I, this is what's worked for me. Feel free <laughs> to play around. But once we have this, we could send that to Glowforge and this is gonna engrave and create that cool kind of undulating grippy pattern. Um, to turn this into something that we can uh, print on our Glowforge, I designed a handle. You can see my working files here where I experimented with different <laughs> things. But like if I grab this one, for example, oh, not that one, maybe this one here. Yeah, here we go. I can take this over here and I actually use the clipping mask tool in Illustrator to make this into something that we could print. I'm gonna move it up, I'm gonna cut it, paste it in front like this, Command 7, and there is the pattern that will fit that particular ah, handle. Mm -hmm. Now what I forgot to do, there we go, if I just copy that first, I can then paste it and I've got a cut line as well. So when we send nice. this, if I separate it, like you can see we've got the engraved part and then the cut line. Uh -huh. And how that will appear in the software is like this. So let's uh, make this a little bit easier to see. Let's delete the rest of this stuff that's on here. Because you can see how many different things I've got going on. Let's move these down onto the artboard. There we go. All right, so you can see there. Wow, I really need a mouse. Uh, we've got two different colors going on, essentially. We've got the blue, which is representing our 3D engrave. And got if it. I hover over it, you can see how it's highlighted uh, in blue just here. And I've just gone down into here and selected the 3D engrave feature, just like this. Same with this one. In there, down here, 3D engrave. And then the rest of these are just normal cuts. The only thing I would recommend is you do the 3D engrave before your cuts, that's all. And that just makes sure the cut ends up in the, wrong pl in the right place. And the, sorry, the engrave ends up in the right so place. So you, you do the 3D engrave before the cut? Yes. Yes, and absolutely. some people prefer to always do the engrave before the cut mm -hmm. um, because the cut will cause the material to drop down just, just so. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess that could make the engrave like slightly less perfect, I suppose. Yeah. But yeah, people mm -hmm. have, you know, all their particularities with their tools like Glowforge, so, but for this particularly, it's a, it's a good tip. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but in essence, that, that's that was it. it. Yeah. That, that's all it takes to create something like this. Now so I if you can create a gradient, you can 3D engrave. I sneaked to look at your screen before and you had the file for this, this, right? Yes. So we kind of see yes. what that looks like Absolutely. as a file. So, here we go. This is what the design <laughs> file would look like for that emblem yeah. that we showed. So, you know, there's a lot more going on here. I believe this one was created in Photoshop, mm -hmm. um, but you could do this in Illustrator as well. But you can still see, if we, if we break it down and look at the different shapes, it's basically a shape with a gradient applied. That bit's light, this bit's dark, this bit's dark. Across here, we've got dark, dark, and then light across the middle. So this is gonna be deep, deep, not deep. And that same technique is applied across the entire print. And all that's happened here is we've just built up layers of different graphics using that same technique. Um, this took a little bit of trial and error. We did sure. a few test prints just to see how dark would get us the relief and, and the sort of 3D form that we wanted to. I think there might be a really old, because that print, that, that particular design, I think we did in like 2016 for yeah, the first time. a long time. Uh, and then we've done it a few times. This is a small version. We actually had a bigger one, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, I couldn't find it. Who knows yes. where it is, yes. Uh -huh. uh, but I think there's a video on YouTube that's public of us designing it, and then, uh, or sorry, of us printing it. You're yeah, right. it's sped up because right. it's such a long print, like uh -huh. hours sort of thing. Yeah, but, I think um, it was about three hours through the big one. Yes. Like an hour per pass, three passes, something like that. Exactly. Yeah. So if you, want, if you want to see it in action, because this is really like, you know, I mean, this is, it's like a statement piece, isn't it? It it's really like a, is. It's like a trophy kind of thing. It's, you wouldn't do them very often, at least not like this, probably. Uh, something like the pickleball bat, you absolutely could. Um, but it'd be worth investing in the design if you were going to print a handful of them for something like an award ceremony. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, really, though, there, something like this is, is best appreciated by, by Glowforge people who yeah. are like, wow, <laughs> a laser did that. Like, uh -huh. that's incredible. I mean, likewise, I would be 
I would be amazed if someone did this by hand too. But just really, I feel like oh, yeah. it can be easy as a consumer to like be like, oh yeah, piece of wood. Of course it looks like this. This is amazing. Yeah, like, this, this is, took. Yeah, this is this is this an is, achievement, everybody, yes. right here from you and us and everybody. But involved. I, I like what you did with this project too. A little bit more practical application. Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to think. We we were brainstorming about what some different projects we might be able to show off. Uh, with 3D engraved for this live stream might be. I'm trying to think of some of the other I, ones that you mentioned. I, I brought this. Oh, okay, this, yeah. This is, this is my oh, a, a pocket knife that I have, mm -hmm. and I replaced the scales on this with acrylic. And did you engrave um, that too? Yeah, oh no, that, that, that's, a, that's a type of steel. Just the uh, What? Oh, uh, well that handle. looks beautiful. It's, it's very like an nice. agate, uh, an agate design yeah, yeah. or something. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, patent, <laughs> but you did this. welded steel, yeah. So that, again, using the same sort of technique, except this time with a square pattern. And that's 3D engraved into acrylic, so it's very grippy, very textured. Yeah. And I was able to incorporate all of the different sort of recesses for the screws and things too. So these circles here are engraved, so the screw is recessed. Uh, on the back here, the space for the clip is recessed too. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of control over how this comes out. And you know, you could absolutely, oh, you know what? Sorry. <laughs> Huge tangent. We're talking about 3D engraving. Yeah. We haven't mentioned the fairy doors. Oh, do the we have any here? I don't know. Oh, that's so frustrating. Well, that's embarrassing because I have one at home. Yeah. <laughs> right. Wait, let me, well, Sorry. let's pull it up. Jump on um, yeah. Instagram or just type in Instagram the fairy doors because I can't remember their handle right off the top of my head. I think it might be the fairy door. So this is one of, one of my favorite Glowforge customers. Uh, we discovered them a few years ago and, uh, and our minds were blown. Um, if if you have ever been to one of those uh, Renaissance fairs, you might have seen this kind of art before. Uh -huh. uh, they sell at Ren fairs and at uh, especially fantasy fairs because their thing is creating these miniature doors as if fairies have you know overtaken wherever you are, and they're incredible. And they use a 3D engrave effect. So what they did was they traveled around, I think the UK, Ireland, and all, and took pictures of beautiful old doors that had old wood with texture and cracks and old doorknobs and all this and they took photos and then they used those to create the designs did you did you find i found it i there we go i think it's oh. coming now we were <laughs> just filling with some cables to try and yeah, oh. figure this out yeah so th there are hundreds of different designs on here okay. bailey was right the handle is the fairy door and there's all sorts of stuff i mean let's just grab this one for example this one is obviously a unicorn made of a different layers, but they take, but look did at you the mention wood. this? You took, they take the photographs photo. yeah. of wood and then use the 3D engraved technique to reproduce the wood on what is essentially MDF. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, here's another example here. Uh, and the frames around the outside of these doors too, I should mention, are they, also 3D engraved. Right, of the rocks. Yeah, the rocks, the wood, the door handles too. There's all sorts. And what this customer does, because they spend a lot of time creating these files and 3D engraving oh, them, is they then make a silicon mold yes. and they cast reproductions in resin. So the 3D engrave only has to happen once. Yep. It's really uh, And that's how they've really been able to scale the business where they can have hundreds of yeah. doors to bring to a weekend event or what have you. Because otherwise that would, the time wouldn't make sense. They, Absolutely, yeah. So it's really and smart. Here's a hand for scale. Oh. So you can see exactly how big those are. They're I really, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's super, 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 super cool. Yeah, um, these are some of my favorites. Yeah, they are incredibly talented I'll have to bring people. one back to the office so I can show it off and not just enjoy it myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, you, you know, we, we were talking about scrubbing the resins out of the yeah. material. I just noticed on their feed there's a picture of a sandblaster here. Oh. So I wonder if maybe they've That's added it. some equipment to their shop to be able to be more efficient with that. <laughs> Who knows? Funny how that happens. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. But anyway, incredible customer. Um, um, all right. Okay, so Keith asked kind of a technical question about 3D and gray. Let's, yeah. let's give it a... Give it a whack. Um, <laughs> does the Glowforge work through the layers on the left-hand side of the app from top to bottom? For example, if the engraving layers are at the top, it will perform the function first, right? Absolutely, yes. And if I jump over there really quickly so you can see those layers, um, I can grab these and drag them up and down. So I can set that order if I wanted to. Or alternatively, I could go into the step and choose ignore, and it would just not print those layers as yep. well. That's another way to do it. But yes, you have the control if you want over the order in which things happen. Yes. Now, if you have, this is maybe an interesting point to note. If you have multiple things that are that are the same, but you want to be treated differently. Okay. Let's say you want to cut two concentric circles. Uh, one is inside the other, and you want to make sure you cut the inside one before the outside one. You change the color of the stroke of that inside circle to be different to the outside circle. It doesn't matter the color. It just means that when you send it to Glowforge, Glowforge sees two circles instead of one file with two concentric uh, okay. circles. Yep. And then, therefore, you can choose which circle it uh, prints first. So you do have that control if you want it. Hopefully that made sense. I was just gonna pop onto 
Instagram and see if there's any other great examples of what people are doing for 3D engraved. All 3D engraved. You know, I'm seeing a lot of um, kind of. Uh, uh, yeah, landscapes. I think they're really great for this as a sandcastle oh, type. You, yeah, you know, we had mm -hmm. um, the Jamaican map. We had the Jamaica, the map of Jamaica. Kind of, It can almost be kind of a topographic yeah. feel. I feel sort woefully of. unprepared. Today. I know. I, well, <laughs> what did we do? I can't we believe it. <laughs> we don't have a lot of examples of 3D, 3D and grade because it takes so long to mm -hmm. do, um, but it is so fun and we know that it's something that y'all are interested in as you level up your Glowforge skills it's really just feeling confident that you that you that you understand the concept because because the the work that you do is really uh you know you're just still pressing the button the glow for just got it handled yeah absolutely <laughs> speaking of time just to give an example we, we talked about this medallion taking a few hours these particular grips that i made oh, yeah um these take for a pair of them 40 minutes right so that's not too bad. That's not prohibitively it's long. It's long for a Glowforge print. I'll give you that. I feel mm -hmm. like we've gotten spoiled. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> if we yeah. were talking about <laughs> a, if true. we were talking about, I mean, 3D. If we were talking about a 40-minute 3D printer print. Uh huh. I mean, I can't even print anything in 40 oh, yeah. minutes on a 3D printer. I think you're still warming up the map. Right. I mean, like, I <laughs> so is that no the, shade on 3D. The Glowforge <laughs> is definitely like a speedy, speedy machine. But this is one of those techniques that can take longer because you're, you know, just taking it to kind of that next level. And we are doing this today on the Glowforge Pro, by the way, but you can do it on mm -hmm. any of the three units. Absolutely. Um, not, not just for the Pro at all. Let me jump back into the yeah, questions, how are we looking at questions real quick. Is that a laser cut drone in the upper right? <laughs> so yes, glad it you is. Asked. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, yeah. nobody notices it uh, in, in, for the most part. Isn't this, this cool? Yeah, this is from our original crowdfunding video that we did when we launched the company. Um, this is. This was actually an intern's full time job to yeah. build this for a couple, maybe a month or something like that. She yeah. built this. And we flew it uh, on set at the, the video that we made for our crowdfund to be like, hey, we have a great idea of to make a Glowforge 3D laser printer, don't you want one? And this th this flew in the video, and mm -hmm. uh, but you can tell we didn't use proof grade, look at all that Yeah, smoke. all the charring and stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have proof grade materials yet, but I mean, this is impressive. We I haven't flown how many it for a while, I, yeah, I wonder if it still flies. Yeah, these, these spin, there's rubber, oh, that, oh, oh that it has rubber, rubber bands, band Gatling, Gatling, Gatling guns, guns. Mm -hmm. that's the thing, yes. Yeah. Um, I think that's just because our, our CEO, Dan, really likes drones. And <laughs> this is, I mean, it's amazing to think about how, how drone technology has changed, though. If you were I mean, a CEO, this, wouldn't you put a drone in your video? Why I mean, not, right? When you could. <laughs> oh, no. Dr drone tech. I mean, so this was from about 2015. Yeah. 14. 14, 15. Something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. You know, five or six years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, but now you could still use your laser yeah. to create something, but you have a little tiny little thing. True, um, they'd be you know, tiny. Yeah, yeah this does look huge, doesn't absolutely. it? Absolutely, <laughs> with all these controls and things like that, the battery systems and things. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of amazing. Yeah, we don't show a lot of this like really makery stuff, but yeah. oh wow, can you go wild with that? Yeah, if this is uh, in your wheelhouse, yeah, you absolutely can. <laughs> not, not me. <laughs> no limits. <laughs> That's too many pieces for me, I think. <laughs> well, not yet, Bailey. You never know. Never say never. Uh, Keith is asking, is there a way to design an SVG file in Illustrator so that Glowforge will automatically know what to cut, score, and engrave without needing to assign the manual, the layers manually? Yes, absolutely. Yes, <laughs> to a point. There is one, well, one small caveat. Okay. Um, <laughs> cuts and scores are basically the same. Sure. Um, so Glowforge doesn't necessarily know which one you want to be cut and scored. When you, when you draw it, we'll create a line and you color that line with a color. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. what it is. And when you send that to Glowforge, that can be either um, a cut or a score. Uh, Glowforge is going to assume it's a cut and then you will go down the list and you would change them to be a score if you want them to be a score. If you send a shape that is filled with color, let's say a rectangle that's green, okay. Glowforge is going to assume that you want to engrave that. And likewise, if you send a bitmap or a photograph or logo, something like that, um, you can only engrave that. So Glowforge is going to assume that you want to engrave it. Mm -hmm. So the only one where you might have to toggle between them is going to be cuts and scores. Yep. Everything else should be taken care of. But now, yeah, using those different colored lines is the key there, that if you want the two things to be different, if you want one thing to be a cut and one thing to be a score, you need to, you can't have them both be the same color in the design yes. process. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, very straightforward. Yeah. Um, it's one of those things that like, the more you talk about it, the more complicated it seems. And then you do it once and you're like, oh, okay, light bulb moment. And that's it. It just makes sense. Ken, I think I need you to elaborate on that question. His question is, are you going to walk through the 3D set on the forge itself? Or maybe the setting? Settings? 
Oh, yeah. Did you do anything special for settings that we should walk no, through? No, no, but I, I can certainly show sure. it um, if people are interested. Um, okay, there you go. So there's my screen. Now, I've got the same file up, so I've just clicked into the step, and down here we've got the 3D engraved setting. Now, if we want to get into the weeds here and see the values, we can click on this little icon here, and this is what we're presented with. And this is the default for Maple, though, and you just let it go? Yes, I okay. just let it go, yeah. Um, so this, for, for most, most people, will be okay. Just looking at this particular print, this engraved probably about a millimeter and a half at its deepest point. Okay. So this particular set of settings will get that deep when your image is 100% black. Okay. So the deepest part of your engrave. Um, now, if we wanted to go a little deeper, there's a few different things that we could do. Um, right now, our speed is pretty slow, but we could slow it down a little bit more, and that means we'd be dumping more power into the engrave um, at any given point in time. Okay. Or we could go down here, where it says lines per inch, and we could increase the resolution, which means we're going to hit the same point on the material more times. Right now, this is set to 340, which means the laser is going to be making 340 horizontal passes per vertical inch of engrave. Wow. If that makes sense. It's quite wow. a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, just to give an example, if you wanted to have the laser engrave and, and basically each laser line just just sit next to each other mm -hmm. and not overlap at all, you'd choose 170 okay. in this particular thing. And right now we're at and 340. And so you lose uh, detail as you do that, right? More you, lines per inch is more detail. More lines per mm -hmm. inch is more detail. Absolutely. Or in this case, more depth. More depth. Because we're digging deeper and deeper into that surface. Um, the third option is number of passes. We could go into here and we could set this to be two or three, um, now whatever you prefer, and that way the Glowforge will print once and then go back to the beginning and print it a second time. Yep. Um, and you can set that independently for each of these. So if you had a 3D engraved that was made up of two prints, for example, you could choose one of them, maybe has you know, three passes down here and much higher resolution because you want to go really deep. And then this one, maybe it turns out it's going a little bit too deep. So we could back off the power, for example, or we could increase the speed. And all of those things would create less power on the surface of that material per an amount of given time. And therefore, it's not going to go quite so deep. Now, there's one other thing here as well, just to mention, and that's this setting here. Now, this is the grayscale setting. This mm. is what allows us to control the way a bitmap is presented on the material. And for 3D engraves, we use very power. And that means that we're using the color to define the level of power. So 100% black is 100% power, 0% is zero power, and everything in between. If we chose to convert to dots or to patterns, what we're actually changing to is a dithering mechanism, which is what we do with photo engraves. And if you're interested in that, you can check out the live stream on photo engraves where we go into that in a little bit more detail. But I think, let's see, if I zoom in, now the resolution's a bit too high, you would be able to see little speckles. And it's just like a newspaper print, like a half tone, you know, little dots. And the concentration of those dots define the color. But they're all done at the same level of power. So you don't get that 3D effect like you do with uh, 3D engrave. Sure. So does that, does that cover I, it? I've sh for me, it sure <laughs> did. Now I know. It's more than most people need. <laughs> uh, if you are interested as well, actually, oh, yeah. on support.glowforge.com. That's what Ken wanted. He answered. Perfect. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> Great. Uh, for a written documentation, support.glowforge.com, there's a manual settings guide, and it goes through each of the different parameters within the settings in a bit more detail with some graphics, so you can learn a bit more there. James is wondering about EPS files because they use Corel Draw or Corel Draw. I no, don't I think Glowforge can accept an EPS file currently, but uh, if you're in Corel Draw, I believe so you that you can export it as an SVG or a PDF. So I think that should be okay for you. Yes. Um, we have added additional file type support in mm -hmm. the past. Uh, DXF is one of the more recent ones we've added. Um, if there's enough call for EPSs, maybe we might add it, but there could be some technical impl implications there too that the sure. software team are like yelling at the screen at me right now for even don't suggesting. Don't tell them yes. that. <laughs> we can't do that. Yeah, we don't. SVG <laughs> PDFs. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, we're almost at time. There's something I meant I meant to mention at the beginning, but um, there's a lot of you still with us, even more, 130 of you here. Wow. Uh, but I wanted to let you know we are unfortunately uh, uh, changing the price of Glowforge printers in the next couple weeks. Um, today's the 15th, and the price is going to be going up next Friday, the 25th, will be the day that the price is raised. So you have about nine days to get a Glowforge right now at our current price. And this is such a bummer for the team. It's yes. been <laughs> yeah, we this is not really something we hard. wanted. We're not all getting huge bonuses or anything oh, as a yes. result. This has just been, you know, the result of two years of a pandemic. You mm -hmm. all know the you know, that you've seen the horrific shipping to I mean I think I think yeah. our CEO wrote us a little a, a note to the team to kind of and, and we talked about it, but to kind of explain and I mean we literally had like 
what a, sh a cargo container printers fall off a ship in the mm -hmm. middle of the ocean. Yeah. Like we've <laughs> no, like had challenges such things. as those in the last uh -huh. two years. And so have lots of companies. I mean, I think you've noticed your grocery bill go up and your gas bill will go up and yeah. everything Energy go up. Too, and yeah. We are not um, thrilled to be joining that club, but unfortunately, but, 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 but I am glad though that we are allowed to tell you ahead of time. Yes, um, no unnecessary surprises. Yes, yeah. so if you're watching right now and you've been watching for a while and you've been thinking you're gonna get a Glowforge, I really encourage you to do it um, You know, before we raise those prices next Friday. So um, just to let you know if anybody's asking or wanting to know right now, um, the price of the Pro will be increasing to uh, $69.95 plus to $49.95, basic to $39.95, and air filter to $12.95. So I believe you can save around $1,300 by purchasing now versus um, waiting. So mm -hmm. again, if that's not in the cards for you, I understand we do have financing options and other things, so hopefully it can be in the future. But uh, yeah, not a fun thing for us to have to do, not the type of thing no, we love to announce no. and market Especially and Especially not to end, about. end this stream on, <laughs> Sorry, which I everyone. thought was really fun. Please yeah. we'll cut this part out. Oh, baby. Um, <laughs> Yeah. But no, I just wanted you, you to all get the, the heads up. And um, as, as, as we often do, if you're watching uh, this stream, you'll get an email with a discount code. So if you use our live stream discount code and you buy before the 24th, you're saving hundreds, if not thousands of dollars mm -hmm. um, off the future price of a Glowforge printer. So yeah. really encourage you to do that so you can do really cool things like we did today. <laughs> <laughs> um, but with that, um, I hope that you all are having a wonderful March. I cannot believe it's it's the it's the Ides of March. In fact, I don't know what that means. Oh, Julius Caesar. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. Okay, to Nick and I. Yeah, have not a, a <laughs> history lesson after <laughs> this. Apparently, I can't believe, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> um, it's a you know a famous assassination day, Nick. Okay, I, I believe you. <laughs> uh, thanks again for joining us today, and we will see you next week. Thanks everybody. Bye everyone. bye. bye.